WCBI News at 6 starts now. A day of remembrance in Columbus as dozens of volunteers and city leaders gather to reflect on last year's deadly tornado. Thanks to you for joining us tonight at 6 o'clock. A day with mixed emotions. The community recovery of Lowndes County and the city, they held a service to remember 41-year-old Ashley Pounds who was killed in that twister last year. Magnolia trees, they were planted at the Sim Scott Park this morning. Sim Scott Park was also destroyed in that storm, you may remember. More than 400 people were impacted, dozens of homes and businesses damaged or destroyed. It left its mark here on the community. But today's ceremony, it also celebrated the milestones since the storm. Countless volunteers and organizations did everything in their power to help the city heal. A second tree was also planted in remembrance of a man who died after falling from his roof while making repairs after that storm. Well, that storm, it rocked the city to its core. That tornado, it was rated an EF3. Recovery efforts are still underway, but throughout the devastation, Columbus remains strong. Our Tyler Hall was out in the community today with one group who took part in a day of service. It's been a wonderful experience just being able to help people and see lives be restored back um, better than hopefully than before the storm. Coming together and rebuilding together. Over the past year, the city has been coming out of the rubble and coming back better and stronger. Saturday it was a day of service to clean up more of what was left behind last year's twister. Nicole Cleanscales is the board president for the Community Recovery of Lyons County and she says this weekend brings back a lot of raw emotions. So today is our day of service. Um, we call it a day of service, but we also wanted to commemorate uh, the lives that were lost and those that were affected by this tornado one year ago. And it's also a day of celebration um, for all the work that we've done as a community to recover from that storm. The community saw different groups, organizations, churches, and volunteers come together to lend a helping hand. It, it has been um, the most rewarding experience. I'll, I'll be honest with you because when that storm hit, many of us didn't know what to do. We just knew we wanted to be of service. And so um, just beginning to do that work on the ground carried over into this organization. Clean Scale says she's happy to be in the friendly city and over the last year, the people of the community have defined what it means living in Columbus. We just thank the community. We really do. We thank the, the love and support that the community has shown every since February 23rd and even up till now a year later. We're just thankful for all the work that have we've done as a collective body. Reporting in Columbus, Tyler Hall, WCBI News. Good to see everybody out there today. Now, just a, a cool knit, a cool side note to this is volunteers, they started picking up and they walked along the tornado's path. Well, a landslide, it forces a road in Choctaw County to shut down. Highway 9 North, about six miles uh, north of Highway 12. It is closed while crews repair that part of the road after a landslide. Now, that road, it's between Ackerman and Eupora. MDOT says that the recent heavy rains are to blame for that slide. The highway is closed to through traffic between Reform and Sturgis Road and State Route 790. Troopers say that stretch of road could be closed for about a month, depending on the severity of the damage. Well, as floodwaters recede in the capital city, they are just reaching their highest levels in other parts of the state. Courtney Ann Jackson traveled to see more of the impacts from the Pearl River flooding. We wanted to make our way downstream today to see how the flooding is impacting counties like Kapaya and Simpson. We started in Kapaya County, but this is as far as I got for Simpson County because water is now over the road here on Highway 28. We'll first take you to the Gatesville community in Kapaya County. Along Gatesville Road, water is still over the road in many spots, but most were able to get out before the water rose this high, including Mr. Sylvester Skipper, oh, whose son carried him out on his back over the weekend. Place. Water is room. going down, but for those waiting to get in their homes, they are already drained. It is affecting me emotionally, and it put a lot of stress on you, and your kids want to come back home. You seeing water in your house, there's nothing you can do about it. And I don't cry myself sleep through nights. Melvina Dixon fears for what's next for her family. I'm losing everything, losing my entire house. And at my age, it would be hard to get 
another one. Staying with relatives in Raymond right now, but I'm here every day. I have to come see what's going on and anticipating the water going down and see what a mess I got after it goes down. Further downstream, they didn't see the river crest till today. In Georgetown, water is still over some roads, but doesn't appear to have gotten inside houses. In Rockport, this family's only silver lining to the flooding is that the home is elevated, but it doesn't make it any easier to process. You know, everybody riding around looking, telling me they're sorry. What are you sorry for? It happened. I live this close to a river and I knew it was going to happen. And, you know, you know the pearl is going to get, it'll come up, but I never figured I'd see this much water. Courtney Ann Jackson, WCBI News. With all of the rain we have seen, it is nice to get some sunshine in these past few days. Clouds are increasing this evening. Gave us some nice sunset pictures. Thanks for sharing those with us on social media and on our WCBI mobile app. Temperatures will fall tonight. We are already seeing 40s on the board, 49 in Jackson and in Columbus, 46 in Memphis. Those clouds continue to build from west to east here ahead of our next system coming on in. Tonight, look for clouds to continue increasing in the region. We drop down into the middle 30s locally here at home. As we head into Sunday, we likely stay dry during the day, but rain arrives by Sunday night. Could be some thunderstorms on Monday. We'll talk all about that and much more in just a bit. Democrats in Nevada got their turn today to pick the candidate they want to take on President Trump in November. Voters headed to more than 200 caucus sites for the third contest in the Democratic presidential race. Michael George reports from New York. Caucus goers across Nevada gathered to weigh in on who they want to be the next president. I am a Culinary Union member and a Bernie Sanders supporter. CBS News entrance polls show Senator Bernie Sanders has a large lead in initial preference of voters as they head into the caucuses. He's bolstered by strong support from younger voters. Thank you, El Paso! Running ahead of the pack, Sanders held a rally in Texas, while his opponents made a final push in Nevada. Pete Buttigieg greeted voters at a caucus site. He sees Nevada as a chance to bring his campaign to more diverse voters. Uh, definitely a great opportunity for us to show that broadening coalition. Senator Amy Klobuchar met with campaign workers. She said her run for the presidency will be viable no matter what happens today. We're excited, uh, but it is the beginning of the next chapter in our campaign. Senator Elizabeth Warren and former Vice President Joe Biden were also out looking to sway voters. 36 delegates are up for grabs. It's a complicated process, so we'll see. Voters told CBS News that health care was the most important issue as they headed into caucus sites. State Democratic leaders say nearly 75,000 voters marked preference cards before Saturday's main event, and they hope today's turnout will surpass the 118,000 participants in 2008's contest between Barack Obama and Hillary Clinton. Michael George, CBS News. Michael Bloomberg, also a Democratic candidate, did not participate in the Nevada caucuses. Well, do you remember the time when you had to actually go inside the bank to do any type of transaction, making a deposit or withdraw? Well, thanks to technology, banking is made more convenient. What's not changed is customer service. Banks have just had to find a way to navigate ways to offer customer both service, personal and interpersonal. Bank First shares some of its secrets in keeping customers happy. It seems as if everything is turning automated, even banking. Bank branches are not going away. You just have to uh, utilize them a little different than we did in the past. Balancing a checkbook, who does that? Really, with mobile banking and online banking, we all have access to our data 24-7. Even Bank First President and CEO Moke Griffin admits the convenience is something he's grabbed onto. I've probably done, you know, nine of my last ten transactions on my phone versus the teller row downstairs. Banks are now forced to design a whole new way of customer service to those opting to bank online or mobile. Griffin says mobile banking is the most used. With all technologies, there's going to be issues, right? And so you really have to shine when there is a customer issue, whether it's mobile banking or online banking or a debit card issue. When you have those issues, now the number one thing for customer service is make sure you respond quickly to those needs. In turn, Griffin says that brings in loyal customers. Some of those loyal customers still prefer going into the bank to do business. Some people, it's pretty amazing, enjoy 
go into the bank. They enjoy visiting with the same tellers that they've seen every week or day for many, many years. Griffin says Bank First continues to strive for the best customer service inside the bank. They just had to adapt to a new audience, which will continue to change as technology advances. Some banks, Griffin says, have adopted video teller machines. Now, one great thing about that is banks can have expanded hours in the drive through but you don't have to have a presence inside the physical bank. It all boils down to a few easy steps to keep a customer happy, which Griffin says is the main goal when it comes to community banking. The service comes in quick response, uh, quick answers if there's a loan request, uh, return phone calls when people call you. I mean, they're pretty simple things, but it is something that in the world of technology, uh, some of those personal touches are being lost. And if you can just be good at the simple things, uh, you can kind of shine as far as customer service goes. Now, Bank First is celebrating a milestone this summer. The branch turns 132 this June. Well, prom is going to be special this year for several North Mississippi students. How one woman is helping them dance the night away. We'll explain next. You're watching WCBI's News at 6. Welcome back, everyone. It's one of the biggest nights for high schoolers prom. One Tupelo woman is making dreams come true for dozens of students by giving them the perfect dress or that fitted tux. Teens lined up this morning at the Mall of Barnes Crossing to take advantage of the third annual Memories of Magical Dresses and Formal Wear Giveaway. Memory Caruthers is the event organizer. She says that this would not have been possible without donations from several area merchants. And she says all you needed to qualify was proof that you are a junior high or high school student. Prom is a once in a lifetime experience and I feel that every child, every child needs to experience prom. And why not that I ease some of their parents' pockets by giving them free wear to wear the prom. I love her passion. She's so passionate about this. Caruther says that if you didn't make it down today, don't worry. They'll have another giveaway next Saturday between 10 a.m. and 3 a.m. PM. All right, we're going to send things over to meteorologist Jacob Dickey. Jacob, do you remember high school prom? Oh, gosh. I don't want to go back. I don't want to relive. <laughs> right, right. Okay, something we do want to relive is days like today with that sunshine. We do. In yeah. fact, I wish we could say we had more coming tomorrow. Rain, though, on oh. the way, Scott. We've got the chance by tomorrow night to see some widespread showers move into the region. When all is said and done, we end up with an average median around an inch of rain. We'll time that out for you coming up after this. CBI First Alert AccuWeather Forecast with meteorologist Jacob Dickey. It has been a beautiful day today with lots of sunshine. Of course, clouds have built on in. Still seeing a little bit of orange on our MDOT camera in Starkville on Highway 12. The sunlight lasting later and later every day. Temperatures are sitting in the upper 40s and low 50s at this time of night here. 52 in Macon. It is 49 in Columbus, 48 in Vernon, 51 in West Point. Tupelo sitting at 47. Overnight tonight, we will continue seeing clouds increase in the region. Look for south and east winds to calm down. And by tomorrow morning, we'll be back into the middle 30s across the region. 35, the low tonight in Columbus and at West Point. 34 at Aberdeen, 34 also in Tupelo. I've got 37 in Aliceville. Tomorrow, expect a mostly cloudy day. Clouds continue to build during the daytime here. There may be a shower somewhere in the afternoon, but I think the best chance for rain holds off until tomorrow night. Sea temperatures, they climb into the 50s again with south winds 5 to 10 miles an hour. Overall, tomorrow, not a bad day. It is mild out there. 57 will be the high in Shannon, 56 in New Holka, Engelmar getting up to 55. I've got 57 in Pittsburgh, dropping into West Alabama, 56 in Detroit, 57 in Kingville, Carrollton getting to 57, and then into the Golden Triangle, Mayhew at 57, 57 in New Hope, French Camp getting to 58. As we look at Futurecast here, notice overnight tonight into tomorrow morning, clouds continue to increase. Futurecast has been trying to put some showers in early tomorrow morning, and so I'll leave a chance there for that. There's just a lot of dry air that's below these showers, so they may evaporate before they get to the ground. Although I will say that there could be some sprinkles at a minimum somewhere. 
Notice what happens by Sunday night into early Monday. Overnight, then rain fills on into the region, and that is expected to last until the early morning hours Monday. By Monday afternoon and evening, seeing a batch of showers and a few thunderstorms push on through, and that will likely be widespread at times. The severe threat looks low. We won't rule it out at this point. I'm just not expecting anything to get out of hand here, and we may see some flooding before all is said and done, unfortunately. Rainfall amounts area-wide generally being about an inch as we get some localized areas could see up to two inches, if not a little more. Here's the big picture here across the region. Again, we're expecting those showers and storms Sunday night through the day on Monday. By Monday night, our first cold front clears on through. It doesn't do a lot to our temperatures. Tuesday is still warm, but a second surge of cold air will come on in as we go into Tuesday night and Wednesday. And that will be the air mass that cools us down by Wednesday here, giving us a blast of Arctic air back into the region. As we expect that air to be a bit chilly here, it's originating all all the way up in Canada and all of that air filling on in to the eastern parts of the United States here, including here at home. The good news is with an air mass like this, though, we'll get some sunshine with it here. By Thursday into Friday, temperatures are in the 40s and 50s still. The weekend looks dry, at least on Saturday for now. There may be another little clipper system on Wednesday bringing some showers. As we get into Saturday, maybe another shower by Saturday night into Monday. We'll be sure and keep you updated. All right, Jacob, thanks so much. Well, the Beavers versus the Bulldogs continuing at the Dude this afternoon. Courtney has all the Game 2 action when we come back. Huh. So far, so good for sixth-ranked Mississippi State baseball. In the Bulldogs' first-ranked test of the season, taking Game 1 to 25th-ranked Oregon State Friday, 6-2. However, today, the Diamond Dogs trying to keep the energy rolling and take the series early against the Beavers. Let's get to Duty Noble Field. MSU looking to stay undefeated, taking on Oregon State. First inning, one-out pitcher Christian McLeod gets his first strike out of the day. He would finish with seven Ks. Bottom half, two outs, two on. Infielder Brandon Pimentel with the RBI single into left field. MSU goes up 1-0. Second inning, two outs and one on. Outfielder J.D. McLaughlin struck out by McLeod to end the inning. The Bulldogs still with a 1-0 lead. Bottom half, two outs. Outfielder Rowdy Jordan singles to left field. Keeps the inning alive. And then the walk fest begins. Bases loaded, two outs. Infielder Josh Hatcher walked, scores Landon Jordan. So MSU up 2 nothing. Next batter, infielder Justin Foskey walked. Rowdy Jordan then comes in to score. And the Bulldogs with a 3 nothing lead. New pitcher Kai Murphy in. Same result, Pimentel walked. Jordan Westberg scores. MSU up 4 nothing. And bottom of the fourth, 5-2 MSU. Jack Washburn pitching. Landon Jordan with the base hit single. Keeps the inning alive. State walks in another run. MSU takes the series outright with the 7-4 victory against the Beavers. The Bulldogs look for the sweep Sunday at 2 p.m. Keeping it rolling on the diamond, 23rd ranked Ole Miss hosting Xavier at Swayze Field for game two of the weekend. Top of the first pitcher, Gunnar Hogland, starting on the mound this afternoon. Strikes out the batter, strands a pair of runners and ends the inning. He finished with a career high of 12 Ks in his six innings on the mound. Bottom third, first baseman Cale Baker doing his most with the two-run bomb. Right over the left field wall, Rebels take a 2 nothing lead. Bottom of the fifth, catcher Hayden Dunhurst at the plate. Sends this one packing to the student section. Get those beer showers ready. A two-run homer and Ole Miss with a four-zip lead. Moving to the bottom of the eighth, Rebels pinch hitter doing his job. Justin Bench with a two-RBI single into center field. The Rebels tack on two more. They go up six None, nothing. And enter shortstop Anthony Servideo, still in the bottom of the eighth. A three run jack, ladies and gentlemen. The Rebels take a commanding 9 nothing lead. Ole Miss with another complete game against Xavier. Only two hits allowed. The Rebels take the 9 nothing shutout and take the weekend series outright. Game three, finishing out the weekend Sunday at noon. Wins at home are nice, however. MSU trying to get a win against Texas AM on the road. First half action guard Iverson. Molinar knocks down the jumper. Bulldogs up 13 12. A little bit later, guard Robert Woodard to guard Nick Weatherspoon. The strong finish at the rim. MSU still on top 22 18. Guard Tyson Carter finds forward Reggie Perry from the edge of the Texas logo. MSU would trail by six going into halftime. Weatherspoon on the steal. Slam to make it a three point game. 
The game starts to slip away from the Bulldogs, however, and the Dogs fall 87-75, 17-10 overall on the season. Coming up tonight at 7.30, Ole Miss men's basketball playing host to Alabama inside the pavilion. This is the only time you can see these two match up all season long. Tip time is again 7.30 p.m. We'll have all that action tonight coming up for you on WCBI Sports at 10. Scott, but that is not the only basketball action we have going on tonight. We've got high school playoffs continuing on as well. That's right. Are you excited? Uh, I'm excited. We're, who's not excited? There's so much going on. Baseball, <laughs> basketball. It's crossover season. <laughs> it's a weird time. It's, you know, it's I, a busy I, I time. Call it a weird time. It's a yeah. busy time. Um, I'm going, I feel like I'm being pulled every which way, mm -hmm. but it's so exciting because we have everything going on. Now, yeah. I'd love if you could throw some football into the mix, but I don't think my heart, my mind, could my soul it. could handle anything like that. I don't think anybody like that. could handle that. That's too much. Yeah, no, that would be way too much. Definitely couldn't handle myself. But could you picture a better day for baseball than today? It was. It seemed a little chilly, but it was nice. Um, if we could get into the 70s and I Meet could have yeah. Yeah, a nice cold drink, it'd be good. Yeah, for sure. Well, that's what your forecast when we come back. Quick shout out to the first graders at Miss Richardson's class at West Dock Tibaha Elementary. We had an ice cream party. Wyatt is in that class, made a bet. If we didn't have a snow day, I'd have to get him ice cream. I lost. So you had to get him ice cream? Yeah, I did. All right. It's a great All time, right. though. Good deal. All right. Thanks for watching, everyone. We'll see you back here tonight at 10.